are Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fan? Happy Monday and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day every day, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions do apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. All right, we are starting off a new week here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, and we have quite a long wait until the next Boston Bruins game. It's Monday morning. As I record, the Bruins don't play until Thursday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time as they head off on an early season California road trip. Very annoying not to have uh, Bruins games to talk about over the next couple of days, but we do have a game to recap from this Saturday and we'll do our power rankings and maybe kick off a mailbag episode as well this season. Before we get into today's episode, a quick reminder, you can find the podcast on social media at locked NHL Bruins. You can find me, my dad jokes and hockey thoughts at Ian C. McLaren. Let's go back to Saturday night where the Bruins beat the Nashville Predators by a score of 3-2, to and special teams were a big theme of the night. We'll talk later about uh, JVR's two power play goals. We'll talk also about the penalty kill. But we have to start off with the first of today's three thoughts from this game, David Posternock's penalty shot. Unbelievable to see him just skate in and beat one of the best goalies in the NHL. Um, just clean. And he said he picked that move up from playing floorball, a big sport in Europe. And one day he pra- he promised his friend that he would go practice with him. He went in and he was terrible. They all shoot like that kind of a delay and deceive as they shoot. And that's the exact move that he pulled on UC Saros. He said he tried to do it there. He was really bad at it. So he tried it on the ice and was much better with it on the ice than he was at floorball practice. That floorball technique was used on Saturday night on UC Saros. He weaved in and out through the slot before executing just a very slight delay in his takeaway, which went behind his right hip, ripping a wicked wrister over the glove of Saros to give the Bruins a 2-1 lead with 5.14 left in the middle frame. He tried it in the preseason, hit the logo in the middle of the goalie, so he didn't have too much confidence going into it, but it worked out. He now has three goals in two games to begin the season. He said it's different than having a breakaway. You don't have time to think. You just do the first thing that comes in your mind on a breakaway. But for a penalty shot, you do have about four or five moves that come into your head. You just pick one and hope it's the right one. And it certainly was uh, the right one for David Pasternak, who, yeah, has three goals in two games to lead the Bruins in scoring and is picking up right where he left off after his 60-goal season from a year ago. He leads all Bruins with three goals. He also leads with 10 shots on goal. So he's got a 30% shooting percentage. You'd like to see that shot total go up a bit, although he is averaging five per game. Um, so he won't score at this same pace per se, but he should 
be averaging about four or five shots. Uh, certainly, he's got uh, four points now to lead the Bruins. The next closest is uh, Brad Marchand with two assists. Charlie McAvoy with two assists and James Van Reems, like who we will discuss here uh, coming up in a moment. But Posternock with the beautiful penalty shot goal to lift uh, the Bruins to victory over the Nashville Predators on Saturday. Not the game winning goal, but still one that gave them a lead. And uh, the Bruins now 2 0 0. Thanks to, in part, that beautiful penalty shot goal. That penalty shot goal, by the way, was the fourth of Pasternak's career, his first since 2019. Back that year, he actually had two within the span of about a month, one on November uh, 10th and the other on December 14th. Uh, his first came in 2016, and it was the Bruins' first penalty shot goal since, uh, well, they actually had three in the year 2022. Eric Howla, Brad Marchand, Thomas Nosek had one on December 3rd last year against uh, the Colorado Avalanche. Thrilling uh, goal. And uh, coming up after the break, we're going to discuss James Van Riemsdijk's contributions and whether or not he was a sneaky Good signing for Don Sweeney here back in the off. David Posternock scores on a penalty shot. The Boston Bruins win the Stanley Cup. And if you want to win 100 times your money, play daily fantasy hockey on the Sleeper app. Now, these are all possible scenarios for this season, but to have a chance at winning big, you need to play daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. As the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network Sleeper is our top choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. With studs like David Pasternak, Charlie McAvoy, and Brad Marchand, all you need to do is pick more or less stats for these Bruin stars, choose on goals, assists, saves, and you heard me, Bruins fans. A 100-time payout on Sleeper is possible, so start paying attention and get your picks right so you can win big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get a $100 match on your first deposit, up to a $100 match. Terms and conditions apply. That's Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Every dayers can expect a brand new episode tomorrow where we will uh, kick off our uh, weekly look at the Atlantic Division power rankings. All right, now the big story or one of the big stories from Saturday night's game against the Nashville Predators was two goals for James Van Riemsdyk. And he scored both of those goals on the power play, matching his power play output from last season already in game two. He had two power play goals in 61 games for the Flyers last year. He's already got two for the Bruins here after two games. He said, first of all, it's been amazing to play in Boston with all the years he's played on other teams. One of the best places in the league to play, and it's a great atmosphere every night. Fun to be on the good side instead of getting booed as a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs or the Philadelphia Flyers. Certainly no reason to boo him on Saturday as he had two goals with, with the Bruins, both of which came on the power play. Obviously, that's a big part of his role, and his job is to be effective there. Coming in on a one-year, $1 million contract, already getting fantastic value from him. There's some other guys who signed, um, you know, low AAV contracts that are veterans. Jonathan Drouin in Colorado, like eight hundred and fifty grand. Blake Wheeler signed a low deal with the New York Rangers. 
Kevin Shattenkirk, Milan Lucic in Boston, uh, Connor Brown in Edmonton, playing with Connor McDavid on the cheap. JVR comes in and makes an instant impact for the Boston Bruins. You know, he said there's some great players that he's on the ice with, and that makes it a lot of fun. Some guys who can make some great plays, and it's his job to be around the net and capitalize when it's his time to do that. And his first goal came in the first period. He banked the puck off Predators defenseman Dante Fabro. A bit of a lucky one there, but he followed it up in the second uh, period. Oh, sorry, in the third period when he tipped home a Charlie McAvoy point shot to put him and the Bruins ahead at 3 2. McAvoy said it's his job to get it there for him. He's made a career in this league out of getting there. He's shown in practice that he can do it and get a stick on it. So just got to keep working on the chemistry, but really happy to see him tip one in. It was a big goal for the Bruins. It was the game winning goal, of course. Uh, Pasternak said as well, JVR is known for outstanding net front. His whole career, he scored a lot of goals on the power play. Uh, he was great in Philly. He makes really good plays in tight for how big he is and how big he, a stick he is. Pasternak added, and uh, they were happy to see him get on the board and for the power play to get on the board as well. Coach Jim Montgomery was pleased with the shot first attitude the Bruins displayed on the man advantage instead of how many times have we talked about them overpassing, making that unnecessary extra pass. When you have a good presence at the net front, uh, it's good to have that puck movement, but JVR allows you to make a lot more plays low just because of his ability to tip pucks. Second goal was incredible, Montgomery said. But the plays that we go down low, he has poise, he makes really good decisions, and he was rewarded with those two goals. Now, not to say he's going to keep up that pace and you know score 40, but 20 seems at least very realistic for JVR. And that would be fantastic value for the Bruins on that $1 million contract. Uh, now the power play went two for five overall, 40% efficiency, which is not bad at all. Uh, Bruins, of course, also had an outstanding penalty kill. And we'll discuss that here in a moment as well overall for the season the Bruins on the power play uh have gone what is it well they're 25 percent so far on the power play and uh hopefully they can keep that clicking at a pretty high rate right now the Maple Leafs 57.1 percent to lead uh to lead the league now, we talked about in the preseason, the Bruins were having some shooting deficiencies, not really getting a ton of pucks on net. Right now, they are averaging 32 shots per game, which is good for 16th in the NHL, or tied for 15th, I guess, with uh, the Carolina Hurricanes. They're allowing 28 shots against which is, let's see here. Oh, the new NHL is terrible. Am I right? Shots allowed per game. They are at, uh, like I said, 28, which is pretty close from the bottom. Rangers only 23. Oilers, Stars 24. Red Wings 26. Vegas, Winnipeg, the Islanders, then the Bruins. So shot suppression is uh, working for them as well. Now they've had two opponents who were not in the playoffs last season. And uh, again, they continue coming up against some Western conference opponents. We will of course preview those games later on in the week, but coming up after the break, we're going to discuss a perfect penalty kill and what that meant for the victory against the Nashville Predators. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. 
from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle with over 122 million parts for your ride. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed every time or your money back. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. The final big takeaway from Boston's win over Nashville the other night was a perfect penalty kill. The Bruins went perfect 7 for 7 on the PK, including a shortened 5 on 3 early in the first period. Outstanding job by the penalty kill. David Pasternak, who does not kill penalties, said it was fun to watch. Uh, it creates a lot of energy for players that aren't out there killing penalties. Guys did a hell of a job. Special teams game, really. Penalty shot goal, two power play goals, zero goals allowed on the penalty kill. Um, they found a way to win, and they're going to sit on it for a couple days with preparing to head out west. So uh, it was a good win indeed. A lot of selflessness, Charlie McAvoy said. They came in and they were trying to reset emotionally in the second intermission. When you're killing as many penalties as they did, it's penalty after penalty, then a five on three. Frustrating for sure. First star of the game went to the penalty kill. Many block shots, 200-foot clears, some offensive chances even, and opportunities that came from it, and uh, a great, great effort. And as much as we malign perhaps Derek Forbord or maybe would rather Mason Lorai in the lineup. It was Charlie McAvoy who singled out Forbord and Brandon Carlo for their efforts on the penalty kill. Carlo played seven minutes and 21 seconds shorthanded. Forbord over six minutes shorthanded. And a fantastic effort. Carlo. 4B, he said, are two outstanding penalty killers. That's kind of their niche, and they do an awesome job at it. They not only block shots, but they save multiple goals, things that slip in behind. And with the PK getting the first star, according to McAvoy, you could argue that both of those guys were very deserving as well. Uh, Montgomery also praised the TD Garden crowd for the energy they brought as they recognized the strong work of the Bruins penalty killers. Swayman also strong between the pipes in his first start of the season. And uh, guys sacrificing. Forwards working together. And tremendous ovation. You could tell it elevated uh, the bench. Swayman singled out. Forboard as well. Forboard swiped a puck off the goal line just in the nick of time. During one of the second period kills, Swayman said he loves that guy. Uh, it's always fun to be out there with him. Mid-game, they'll be jawing it. Just goes to show his awareness as a D-man and a hockey player in general. All the guys did that tonight. Blocking shots, having awareness, boxing guys out so that he can see the first and second shots. A big defensive dominant win. And... Uh, yeah, again, as much as we might prefer Mason Lorai in there, you can't deny that uh, Swayman, you know, saying he loves having Forbort out there. Um, it's it's undeniable the impact that he has on the penalty kill. Yes, they still succeeded without him in the lineup last year on the penalty kill, but. Seven for seven against a team that has the likes of Roman Yossi, Tyson Berry on the back end, leading the power play, Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly. Very, very strong effort. Um, a couple other notes from the game. Swayman, 33 saves, 
Good to get the win. Both Allmark and Swayman picking up early season wins. And um, good to get them going early on. Get that um, momentum. Pasternak, I mentioned, his uh, penalty shot goal with this only the second of his career? That can't be right. That's not what Hockey Reference said. Anyways, um, and Pasternak skated over the glass by the tunnel and greeted his partner Rebecca and their baby daughter Freya before the game. Uh, that was very special, he said. It was the first time that happened. Warms your heart. You see them there. It gets you excited for the game. And um, he's new to the glass thing around your daughter. You see that clips all over the NHL with NHL players greeting their kids at the glass. He said he was a little shy, didn't know what to do. Nice to see them. Uh, they only stayed maybe one period, but he was happy that they came. And that's just a great thing for David Pasternak and his partner, Rebecca, after everything that they have been through. All right, that's it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this three thoughts recap. Pasta's penalty shot learned from playing floorball, JVR's power play goal contributions and his sneaky good signing by Don Sweeney and uh, the effective power penalty kill, I should say, is back. And that was huge in the victory. Coming up tomorrow, we'll bring the power rankings. Wednesday, maybe we'll open up the early season mailbag. Thursday, we'll preview uh, the upcoming California road trip and bring you all the latest here on the Black and Gold on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.